individual players, their accomplishments, and what teams they're using. Uh, on your screen, you're seeing Mackenzie Caruso's. Uh, she, of course, got third place in Athens and fourth place in Athens, uh, Athens 12 and then Athens 13. Second place in St. Louis and then top 32 at Nationals in 2012. Uh, so she's obviously already improving on her past results, looking to take home a national championship on top of that. And of course, you're seeing her team in the lower left-hand corner there. Venusaur, Kangaskhan, Rotom Heat, Aegis Slash, Garchomp, and Salamence. Classic double dragons. <laughs> Fan favorite there. And up next, we have Zach Thornburg. First place regionals, top eight in 2013 nationals, and third place in regionals this year. Uh, again, a national championship. It's going to look quite nice on that list of accomplishments. And again, the team in the lower left-hand corner there. Gothitelle, Mawile, Rotom Heat, Ludicolo, uh, Garchomp and Scrafty. Scrafty, another one of those Pokemon we haven't seen too much out of, but an interesting team nonetheless. Yeah, interesting to see that we both have Scrafty and Ludicolo on this team. Uh, a lot of what they bring to a team is the move Fake Out, so interesting to see both of them on the same team. Uh, create some different options here. Fake Out might be something that he considers very important to him. Uh, also, kind of interesting with the top eight finish for Zach in the past, probably have very high expectations coming in this tournament and getting to the finals now. I'm sure he's very eager to try to finish the job this time after coming so close last year. Yeah, definitely. And we are just about ready to get back into the battle for this first game one of the Senior National Championships. Let me hear you guys cheering for these two great competitors. All right, there you see on your screen, McKenzie and Zach, and we are going to hop right into game. Again, just for reference, McKenzie's team, Venusaur, Kangaskhan, Rotom Heat, Aegislash, Garchomp, Salamence, versus Zach running Gothitelle, Mawile, Rotom Heat, Ludicolo, Garchomp, and Scrafty that you see on your screen. Uh, Scott, can't begin to describe how excited I am for this match. <laughs> I am too, and I'm sure these players are as well, so this turn's going to be really important for them to kind of calm down, uh, figure out what their strategy is going to be, and figure out what they're going to need to do to beat their opponents here. They only have 90 seconds to figure this out. And usually the game is decided by this turn more than any other. It's very important to lead correctly, especially with Gothitelle involved. If you lead something that with Gothitelle combined with another Pokemon you just can't handle, you're going to go down quickly early and have a really hard time recovering. We mentioned that Gothitelle and Maul create some big problems for Kangaskhan. So Mackenzie's going to have to take some time here to figure out how she's going to solve this. It's very important for her to figure out what the solutions could be here. Uh, it's possible that, that Venusaur is another Mega for her. She may want to consider that. It might match up a little bit better with this team, especially with some of the other Pokemon like Ludicolo, who uh, aren't going to like dealing with a poison type for Venusaur nearly as much. Uh, she also has Garchomp, who I think is effective against a bunch of Pokemon on this team, such as Rotom, such as Maul. So we'll see, have to see what she does here and figure out if she can kind of figure her way through this matchup a little bit. Yeah, and there you see on your screen a nice shot of our great crowd here in Indianapolis, Indiana, our two competitors, as we are going to hop straight into the game. You're totally right. That first, uh, just even showing Gothitelle in team preview puts tremendous amount of pressure on these leads. Zach showing Gothitelle as his first Pokemon out, as well as that Rotom Heat, up against the Venusaur and the Aegislash. Smart leads from McKinsey, that Aegislash giving her a nice out for the, pair, uh, for the trap of Gothitelle. Yeah, smart plays on both sides here. Uh, Zach, obviously an expert at playing his team there. I'm sure he's used to seeing a lot of Aegislash leads because players know that they can use that option to try to get out of the Shadow Tag. So he leads the Heat Road time with Gothitelle, gets the early advantage in that department since Aegislash definitely doesn't want to try to take an overheat. But also Venusaur is out here, which is another nice choice. We see that as likely the Mega of this game instead of Kangaskhan. A little more disruptive to these Pokemon with the Thick Bat ability. It's not going to get blown up quite as easily by a potential overheat. Uh, it could be threatening Sleep Powder on that Gothitelle here to try and to prevent it from using anything like Trick Room. I need these Pokemon vulnerable to Charm, so Gathatel's other main trick, that can be a big factor here. Yeah, and Rotom is going to switch out uh, on Zach's side for that Scrafty. Going to bring in that uh, Fake Out pressure and the Intimidate. Uh, not too big of a deal for the Venusaur or the Aegislash here, most likely, um, but does add additional pressure with the Fake Out and the Gothitelle. Venusaur does decide to Mega Evolve, goes ahead and bulks itself right up. It spends some time at the gym. And Aegislash taking a very conservatively start, going with the King Shield to protect itself from any incoming damage, while Venusaur does opt for the Sleep Powder onto Gothitelle, connects, and Gothitelle, well, first time out at the finals, and I guess it's been tired from the rest of this tournament because it's taken a snooze. <laughs> well, hopefully she'll wake up soon for Zach's sake. A very good first turn by Mackenzie there. Uh, she didn't switch out the Aegislash in spite of Rotom being out there. Uh, perhaps just kind of, you know, not falling for the bait there. As Zach tried to stay a step ahead there, realized he had the counter to, to Aegislash out that was likely to switch because it could get out of that Shadow Tag, so he just tried to go a step too quick there, and she wasn't having any of it. So 
Uh, Scrafty is also actually a really good counter to Aegislash, though, with the taunt. It can stop it from using King Shield to switch back into its form, so one of the best counters to its ability to change forms. And Venusaur is going to go straight on the offensive here, dealing a little bit of damage to that Scrafty, and the taunt comes out like we expect onto that Aegislash. Going to make sure that can't use Substitute after the taunt or that King Shield while Gothitelle's still napping. A little bit of damage onto that Scrafty, but you know, Scrafty's a pretty bulky Pokemon, and Venusaur is not necessarily known for its uh, exceptional attacking ability. No, I mean, if you want the offensive Mega, you pick something like Kangaskhan, you pick something like Charizard, <laughs> you pick something like Mile. Venusaur's more there to support. Uh, sometimes that adds a great element to the team. We see it disrupting the strategies here, but had a whole lot of damage. Yeah, we can see it still trying to get some damage off the Sludge Bomb onto Gothitelle that's still sleeping. Been sleeping for quite some time now. While Scrafty gets off a second taunt onto Venusaur, not going to let Venusaur uh, go ahead and launch any more of those sleep powders. While Aegislash again goes on the offensive and is going to shadow ball that Gothitelle. Will it get the KO? Yes! And McKenzie breaks the trap by getting the KO on that Gothitelle after quite a few turns of sleep. That's going to be very relieving for her. She doesn't have to deal with Shadow Attack for the rest of this first battle. It's going to make it a lot easier for her to play because it makes the game more normal. It's not a very ordinary situation to have to deal with trapping. Only a couple Pokemon that are viable have the ability to do that. So it really changes the way you're used to playing the game. She can make things a little more normal now. Uh, one thing that is going to be tricky for her here is that she does have both of her Pokemon taunted, so Venusaur won't be able to use Sleep Powder on Mile here, which should give it an advantage, and it does have a pretty good matchup with Venusaur uh, when that is the case. Also, Aegislash is not going to be able to go back into its shield form unless it switches out first, which is likely what's going to have to happen here. Otherwise, it's going to be in danger of taking a big crunch from Scrafty here and evening the game up right back at three. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the secret MVP of Zack's team so far has been those two taunts onto Venusaur and to the Aegislash, forcing Aegislash to stay in the blade form, uh, which weakens it defen its defenses while Mawile is out on the field, something you never want to be able to take free shots at weakened Pokemon. Uh, Venusaur is going to switch out to break that taunt in favor of the Rotom Heat on McKenzie's side, and Mega Mawile does make an appearance on the field, going to go ahead and Mega Evolve, I get that huge power boost while Scrafty goes for the crunch onto the Aegislash, the blade. It's so weak, it doesn't have its shield in front of it, and gets the one-hit KO from Scrafty onto Aegislash with that crunch. Huge knockout for Zack there, while Mawile's play rough is going to hit that Rotom Heat, dealing about half damage. Not very effective, but dealing some good damage, but does allow Rotom Heat just, just enough damage for Rotom Heat to be able to recover with that Citrus. I'll be interested in seeing how that decision works out for Mackenzie. She kind of made a value decision there. She just decided that, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to get Aegislash knocked out here unless, you know, I'm really outsmarting him. He's just not expecting there's any chance I'll leave it in there. But uh, she does get Venusaur back out for free. It's no longer taunted, so it can use Sleep Powder to disrupt that Maul if it wants to. Uh, Rotom's out in the field, also disrupting that Maul because it doesn't want to take an overheat. So she's control of the battle back. Even though she gave up a Pokemon to do it, it's not necessarily a poor decision, right? You don't get extra points for winning 4-0. So perhaps this, she thinks this puts her in a better position to try to control the game from here. Momentum's a big deal in this game, and she kind of has gotten back to having a better board position than her opponent, so interesting play. Yeah, especially nice to, to get that Aegislash off the field while Scrafty and Mawile are both uh, threatening it. Rotom does go for the overheat, gets the correct prediction onto that Scrafty, not going to hit that overheat into the Protect, and a critical hit takes out Scrafty, and Zack goes down a Pokemon this turn. Wow, that one shot onto the Scrafty. Venusaur trying to Giga Drain onto the Mawile there, not going to deal any damage thanks to that Protect, but a huge knockout in favor of McKenzie there. Yeah, seeing that Giga Drain as opposed to the Sleep Powder indicating that was likely a double target, so that critical hit didn't matter very much, but you know, sometimes good thing co things come to people who make the best decisions. Uh, excellent play there, knowing that Miles is not going to just sit there and take one of the overheats over Sleep Powder with how important he is to Zach. So she's smart enough to double up on the other target, gets a big knockout, and now she's in great position again. Likely going to have to re re retreat that Rotom so she's able to overheat them all at full power again, but it's only going to take one overheat getting away on that mile to turn this game around. Not yeah. turn it around, but I clinch it probably. Oh, and the Sucker Punch is going to fail as the Rotom Heat goes for the Will-O-Wisp onto Mawile. Gets the burn, cutting Mawile's attack substantially with a Sludge Bomb going off onto the, in uh, the enemy Rotom Heat for McKenzie. And a Thunder Wave onto the Mega Venusaur. A lot of status spread this turn, but I'll, probably the most important status being spread uh, in favor of McKenzie here. Yeah, that burn's really going to put a timer on the rest of this battle. An interesting way for her to try to finish this battle off, rather than going for the overheat, she picks the slightly safer route with the Will-O-Wisp. 
even though it has you know, a chance to miss as well, by getting the burn on there, Moiles becomes much less of a threat for the rest of the game, and you know, having to deal with a critical hit sucker punch or something is less threatening. Yeah, and we can see the burnt sucker punch coming in, still doing a lot of damage with that critical hit, exactly as you predicted, Scott. But McKenzie's Rotom Heat, even with the special attack drop from the first overheat, it's going to deal so much damage to the enemy, Mawile. Just not quite enough, still hanging on by a thread there. Uh, but this Thunderbolt coming back from Zack, still not going to get the KO onto McKenzie's Rotom. And the Sludge Bomb back at Zack from, from Mega Venusaur. Both of Zack's Pokemon oh, holding on at just a sliver of health. And uh, that's about all she wrote for this game one, I think. Yeah, but how smart does McKenzie look right now? <laughs> uh, predicting the critical hit there. She's playing for the safest scenario right now. If she hadn't burned, instead she'd gone for the overheat, that critical hit would have caused her to lose this game. Instead, she mm. plays it safely and takes the win. I think that's a lot of how you become a great player in this game, is you don't take a necessary...